Another thing I just want to clarify is that you're only passing the ball back and forth at certain times. Sometimes you're going to focus on running. So when you're on the straightaways, that's when you'll throw the ball back and forth and you'll do the monkey in middle thing with your partner. And then when you're on the curve of the track, you're going to stop with the passing. You're going to hold the ball and you're going to sprint as fast as you can to get to that next straightaway. So what's going to happen is whoever, um, so say you're on team one, um, whichever Whoever has the ball, either player one or player two on team one, will hold the ball during that straight uh, during that curve sprint, and then once they get to the straightaway, they'll go back and resume the passing to their partner. So that's just another thing to point out. So now we'll move on to the scoring that I was mentioning earlier. How do you tell who wins? So basically, the team with the lowest time is the winner, right? It's a race, but the lowest time isn't just who finishes first. The lo and what I mean by that is throughout the race, you can get some either time deductions or you can get some time added to your time. So if, you're t if a team drops their ball, four seconds are added to their time. And remember, that's bad. It's a race, so you want to get that low time. So if you're dropping the ball, you're going to get more seconds. It's a, it's a penalty almost. Um, if a team loses possession of their ball, but then also the other team is taking the ball, then that team who lost that possession of their ball will get six seconds added to their time. And then on the other hand, if a team gains possession of the other team's ball and they're taking that ball, two seconds are taken away from their time. That is an advantage. So they went out there, they made that offensive decision to take the other team's ball, they're going to get that two second advantage, which will lower their time and ultimately help them win. So from that, we kind of learn that teams must balance both offensive and defensive strategies and kind of figure out what's best for them. So now we're gonna connect this back to our what we've learned in ninth grade PE. Why are ninth grade PE skills necessary in possessive monkeys on the track? So like I mentioned, these skills up here, we're gonna find out why they're important. Um, oops. Okay, so muscular endurance is really important in this game because it is a longer distance. 800 meters is half a mile, so you need to have that um, in muscular endurance so players can maintain their strength throughout the entire race so they have the energy to continue passing the ball even if they're tired after the first lap. Um, and it's important that they can run at a quick pace for a prolonged period so that muscular endurance gives them that. Uh, muscular strength is also important because that's what gives players that quick burst of great speed, just like exerting that burst of speed. So that is important in this game. So when players need to sprint that um, curve or when they need to quickly lunge and grab the ball, that helps them do it more quick and get a lower time. Um, possession skills are so important in this game, especially on the ball possession. And how we do that in this game is you're tracking the ball, trying to see where your partner is throwing it. Um, you have to use your eye hand coordination to successfully throw it to your partner and successfully catch it, which is important so that you can you won't get any time deductions. And using the possession skills that we learn in ninth grade PE, if players apply those skills, they can they'll know how to position themselves to best work with their partner and best pass that ball. Um, another thing you learn in ninth grade PE is communication, both verbal and nonverbal. So the verbal communication is important because before the t uh, game begins, players need to discuss strategy. You know, are we going to take a defensive approach, an offensive approach? So them communicating with each other and talking and figuring out what they're going to do is going to make them more successful. If everyone's on the same page, the team is more successful. And then the nonverbal communication comes into play when during the game. So, you know, you and your teammate are in your lanes and you need to alert each other when you're about to pass that ball. But you don't want to do it in a way like, hey, pass me the ball now, because when you do that, the person in between you is going to try and grab that ball and then they're going to have that advantage, which you don't want to do. So players need to communicate non-verbally, maybe with a hand gesture 
or a secret look or something that will help them get the ball without the other team knowing or help them snatch the other team's ball without the opponent knowing. Um, and so having these communication skills that you learn in ninth grade, PE, prevents the ball from falling into the other team's possession, which is essential in this game. And all of these skills involve teamwork. Teamwork is necessary in all games, including um, this one. So teamwork is very important because it involves players working together to achieve the same goal. And you see that in all games. So when people work together, um, you know, they kind of develop trust for each other, which helps them win because they're going to just do things more efficiently. And when people work together, they get things done more successfully because it's double the, the effort and double the energy put into it and you have somebody to fall back on. So in Possessive Monkeys on the track, also teamwork helps the players because when you're throwing the ball, you know that you can trust your teammate to help you win, to help you catch that ball. And a good thing with this game is it enforces that teamwork skill that you learn in ninth grade PE because it's going to create bonds between players. You know, you're a player in Possessive Monkeys on the track, and you're going to trust your teammates, and then you're going to associate your teammates with success because you won this game together. And then you're just going to become closer to each other because you helped each other win. So, using all of the skills that you learn throughout PE um, helps you in this game, and it helps you perform your best because you can apply all that knowledge and be successful. So here is just a little um, example. I did some monkeys because as we know, it's similar to monkey in the middle. So here's the two monkeys on team one and they're standing in the odd lanes, one and three, and they're throwing the red ball to each other. And then here's the two monkeys on team two. Um, and they're standing in the even lanes, two and four, and they're throwing that blue, blue ball to each other. And it seems almost like it's early in the race here and that the monkeys aren't yet trying any offensive approaches, but they are being very defensive and not letting the other team get possession of their ball, which is good. So that is that, and that is how you play possessive monkeys on the track. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.